Our first question is going to come from Megan Cooper from Jamunky. Hi there. So thank you so much. We loved the movie. It was so funny. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I would love to hear about the inspiration for the old letter that Simon reads to Ken. That was one of my favorite Thanks. questions. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's funny, you know, part of prep for this movie, we were doing these really long Zoom calls with Vince and Paul talking about their characters and going through the script. And at one point, Vince said, would it be funny if I just carried around like old World War I letters or something? And, you know, I could have those gloves and we were kind of all laughing. And then our friend Leo was here and he's like, you know, my grandfather fought in World War I and he would write letters to my grandmother and we actually found them. And so he called his wife and his wife shipped out these old letters and we started reading them and they were beautiful. And the letters in the movie are really based off of these actual letters. Like his grandfather's name is Leo Sullivan and we yeah. they're all based off these real letters and it just cracked us up that he would carry these around with him. and. But also as a postal inspector, and, and really we're the, we kind of did this as a little bit of a, that storyline as a little bit of a love letter to the post office and also postal workers and post, postal the power inspectors. Of a letter. And what we realized is exactly the power of that letter of, I write a lot of letters now because of queen pins, but I really love writing these letters because it is really poignant when someone gets it in the mail unexpectedly. And it's just a letter to say, I'm thinking of you. I miss you. I love you. And we really hope that it inspires people all around the world to take up letter writing again. If someone is important in your life and it's meaningful, send them a letter. Don't send them an email, but just send them a letter so they can always go back and read it and know how much you love them. Our next question is going to come from Amy Fulcher from As the Bunny Hops. Hi. Hi, Amy. Hi, guys. Um, so how did you go about creating characters that were doing illegal things and still make them endearing and somebody that you would root for in the end? Well, part of that is the power of Kristen and Kirby being so likable for because, sure. <laughs> you know, we, we knew early on that Connie really needed to be someone that would be likable even as they're committing crimes. And when we sat down with Kristen, one of the first things she said to us was just that. She said, you know, for some reason, even if I'm behaving badly as a character, audiences still enjoy watching me do that. And when she said that, we're like, she has to be Connie because that's exactly what we need. Yeah. And I think the same thing with Kirby. Like, I, I don't think, and this is something that's really important when we write characters, is that we don't judge our characters. We come from a journalism and documentary background, and it's important for us to know that we as human beings are imperfect. We make good choices and we make bad choices in life, but we don't want to always be judged by those bad choices. And so we really felt the journey that Kristen and Kirby we're going on. We're really about just life choices and, and really like accepting what those decisions are. And then you're putting yourself in situations that can be crazy and dangerous and absurd sometimes, but it's because of the choices that you make. And we hope that you love them just as much as you like Paul and, and um, Vince as well, because, you know, you might not like some of the choices that Paul makes, <laughs> in a in a car, for example, but it also is true to the situation that he's in. Great, thank you, guys. Our next question is going to come from um, Christina Petruzio. Hi, my question is: What made you want to make this movie, and do you have a favorite scene from filming? Uh, uh. I mean, I think what made us want to make it is, um, you know, we were feeling a lot like. Connie and Jojo, we were feeling kind of undervalued and discounted in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And for years, we had been trying to get these other scripts off the ground. And we kept being told by financiers, we love the script, we love the actors that you have attached to it, but you don't have any value in the industry. Mm -hmm. And we were just trying to change that equation. We knew that was the only thing we could control. And we said, well, let's write a comedy that is more commercial in a smaller budget and maybe we can get it made. I think what we didn't know is that we were kind of channeling that feeling into our characters because then we write a movie about these two women that felt <laughs> undervalued, that found a loophole around the system to succeed. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Was there two questions? Yeah, there? what's there your was a, favorite scene? Oh yeah, what's what's your favorite scene? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I have a favorite scene. I hate to say that, just because I just love so much the dynamics between Paul and Vince, but also Kirby and Kristen, and they just bring me so much joy. I think we're so close to it. It's hard for me to pick one because then it's like picking a baby, and I don't, I can't pick a favorite. The the yeah. funnest scene to shoot in oh, the movie shoot, on, yeah. on set. Yeah, I think the most laughter was when. Paul was inside of the SWAT truck and shooting that. And somehow just him wearing that SWAT helmet always brought us joy. And there was just, it was felt so kind of crazy in that moment, but you know, a postal inspector SWAT team was involved in the real story, but that was fun to shoot. And in that raid sequence, Vince and Paul were doing a lot of improv. That was just like, it started going so off the rails, but it was so funny that it had us like- Paul was (laughs) crying. Um, thank you, guys. Our next question is going to come from Karen Bailey from Rockin' Mama. Hi, Rockin' Mama. Hi. Hi. <laughs> the movie was Rocket. I loved it. Oh, um, you. And I'm particularly compelled by stories that are inspired by true events. And so I wanted to um, find out what, how did you, like, how did you come about the story? Like, how did you, did you know about this whole couponing On scheme? a blog. On a coupon <laughs> blog. Oh, <really? laughs> And then what factual like parts of the story did you choose to include and how you decided like what to include and then kind of take your own creative spin on. You talk so. about the... Yeah, sure. So um, out here, if there's an interesting story, usually it's scooped up super fast by like George Clooney or Brad Pitt's company. It's like, you know, people who can have access to things very quickly get them before we do. So we're always like, they felt like we're always the last in line. So Aaron and I end up taking deep dives on the internet and just trying to search for some really interesting true stories that might make uh, it worth a Hollywood movie. And we ended up, I don't even remember how, but we ended up on a coupon blog and there were just three lines talking about a $40 million coupon caper. And it happened to have the name of the detective in Phoenix who investigated this case. So we immediately called the detective And we were like, wow, this is an incredible story. And we got in our car and drove basically a week later to Phoenix, Arizona and started researching and writing the film. And he would show us, you know, he showed us photos from the investigation and actual counterfeit coupons that the women had used. And but what we realized, too, is, you know, we loved the scam and what they did and how much money they made and what they did with the money and how crazy it got. But we really wanted to create our own characters within like the framework of that coupon scam. And we wanted to say something with those characters and have them be sort of like lovable Robin Hood types. And so we don't really know a lot about the real women that did it. We just know about that investigation. And then we really created our own characters within it. So it the coupon scam was the inspiration and launch pad that we then built the story around. Um, the next question is going to come from Angela Camacho from Queen Bee Latina. Love the poster. Hi, thank you for yeah, having- representing. Oh, thank you. I love it too. How to <laughs> represent. Um, I just have to say, I love the film. It was really different from anything that I've seen and it was funny and there was a lot of like, you know, tender moments and relatable moments, but what do you think is the message that you want your viewers to take home with? Yeah, I mean, way, when we were making this film in the height of the pandemic in Los Angeles, we told our cast and crew, listen, once we get through this, there are going to be people who have been struggling and just need to find some joy and happiness in this lo- in, in their lives. And we really believe Queen Pins can be that film for them. So if we do our job well, we can bring them a little bit of joy and a little bit of happiness. And through this process, if people are feeling undervalued or discounted, Hopefully we can inspire them to find their own legal loophole to be able to find their (laughs) self-worth. Yeah. And and to not let other people define your worth. I think Mm -hmm. that was something that we were feeling in Hollywood. We weren't going to let Mm -hmm. these financiers define what our worth was. And for them, like in their, in their lives, when we meet them and it's not just Connie and Jojo, it's also Ken and Simon, all of them, are sort of undervalued in their worlds, uh, but they don't let other people define their worth ultimately. And they all find ways to, you know, take a step ahead in their life and in their growth as people. 
Our next question is going to come from Vina and her adorable little boys. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I, mean, I, I love, love the movie. Um, my question really was, it was fascinating to like see how the fertility journey of Connie was like woven through the movie. And I was curious if there was an inspiration to that, because I think that the financial cost of fertility treatments is sometimes not talked about and it kind of caused her desperation. But at the end, as it was kind of beautiful to know that she chose another sperm donor. So I was just curious, like kind of where that inspiration came from for that part of the storyline. There were a couple of inspirations. The first one is when we we started thinking about who Connie could be. We had watched this program about Olympic athletes and how so many of them in the U.S. are struggling yeah. financially and using coupons. Mm -hmm. And yeah. because the U.S. doesn't subsidize our Olympians the way a lot of countries do. Yeah. So we liked the idea of her being this former Olympian who had something in her life and it had been taken away from her at a young age. And then we started reading about how a lot of women Olympic athletes have a lot of trouble conceiving because of what they put their bodies through. So then that came into it. And then I think as we started doing sort of a deep dive into what that meant, you know, we would watch videos, you would just be, I would be bawling, bawling. Yeah. Wa watching these YouTube videos of these women that were yeah. going through IVF treatments and all of the, like the roller coasters. What we didn't realize was just how many people turned to IVF and the cost that was associated with it. And then also the opportunity that can come from it in a joyous way, but also for so many, the missed opportunities that it, it does, doesn't just doesn't happen for them. And realizing that you have to pay to just want a family seemed so challenging and it wasn't really discussed in a way before that we felt was meaningful and heartfelt and also the part where you don't succeed wasn't really discussed a lot in anything that we ever saw before on film and we really wanted to just really appreciate the person that is suffering and really recognize that suffering and go on that journey of how do you try to move forward from the suffering of not being able to have the dream that you want, which is the family. And even though it was a comedy, we had never yeah. made a comedy before, but we didn't yeah. want to make one that was just sort of surface. We mm -hmm. wanted it to yeah. have a, have some depth and some heart and yeah. address some issues that maybe you wouldn't normally find in a comedy. Yeah. So um, I'm going to throw it really quickly to Melissa from Dandelion Women. Um, I love you guys. You guys are so real, so authentic. I love your story. I, I love that you guys created this. Tell us a little bit, a little bit more about the creative process. Like I'm, I'm curious just kind of how you layered that, like you pulled in these different aspects. Could you quickly kind of a quick snapshot of that? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we start with the research and so everything comes from our documentary and journalism background. And then we really look at the characters and we storyboard and we try to decide like who, you know, we don't want to judge our characters. Every character and every choice that they're making is choice just because it's in the situations that they're in. So we then just have to understand, like with the female journey, what are the themes that we want to address through it? And with the male journey, what are the themes that we want to address through it? Aaron comes from editing. So when we're writing our script, even he's editing the movie, even on the script page in his head. So our scripts feel, and if we do our job well, it almost feels like you can see the movie on the script page. But it is organic too in the research yeah. where, you know, yeah. at first it, like yeah. we were saying, oh, she's an yeah. Olympian. Oh, Olympians have trouble conceiving and they use coupons. And, and it would yeah. be the same thing. We would stumble across, mm -hmm. you know, a coupon, an extreme yeah. couponers YouTube channel and we start watching them, yeah. all these YouTube videos and yeah. like Jojo would be born. And, we would yeah. then develop that character or we would be doing this deep dive into the postal inspectors yeah. and then, you know, create Simon's Vince's character, Simon. And it, it all would happen sort of organically through the research. 